The text for this first lecture is Isaiah 33, 14 through 15. The sinners in Zion are afraid. Fearfulness has surprised the hypocrites. Who among us shall dwell with devouring fire? Who among us shall dwell with everlasting burnings? He that walks righteously and speaks uprightly. He that despises the gain of oppressions, that shakes his hands from holding of bribes, that stops his ears from hearing of blood, and shuts his eyes from seeing evil. What does such a text as the previous verses in Isaiah 33, 14 through 15, have to do with our generation in America in 2015? Everything. For we are filled with hypocrites who do not shut their eyes to anything evil, like in Isaiah's day, forgetting that the text before us says that the only ones who will escape eternal burnings and a literal burning fire, consisting of God's full wrath forever in hell, are those who shut their eyes from seeing of evil. With knowledge that an eternity burning in hell is reserved for all those who do not keep their senses of walking against sin, speaking against sin, despising sin, shaking his hands from sin, stopping his ears from hearing sin, and tonight watching sin, one would think that men and women in America would be fearful to continue professing Christ while sinning against their consciences and what they see. Sadly, among professing Christians, there has been a revolutionary change in how Christians have viewed shutting their eyes to sin from the time of Isaiah 33, 15 until the early 1900s. Thus, I am going to take the first two lectures in showing how we have come from 1612 to 2015 in not shutting our eyes to sin in America. In the first lecture, I am going to show how godly men stood up to the threat of stage plays, which is equivalent to our movies today. And in the second lecture, I am going to show how other men have slowly eroded the historical condemnation of watching movies, either willfully doing so or ignorantly being deceived. Then in the third lecture, we will examine exegetically from Scripture whether increased matter, Jonathan Edwards, Samuel Miller, and James Alexander were right in showing the danger of setting our eyes on other people's sins, or was Johannes Voss and the majority of men since then correct in saying we can look at things so long as we are not tempted and thus sin with our hearts according to our only authority, God's holy word as expounded in Isaiah 33, 15. However, before beginning the first lecture, I want to briefly state three things. First, how true Christians can be ignorant involving their watching sin. Second, to define the term stage actor and the synonymous use in these lectures. Third, to show how Satan has deceived us with regards to what the Bible has to say about stage actors. And finally, the three ways that we sin by watching stage actors sin in the movies. First, so that I am not showing myself a hypocrite, I want to say that for the first three to four years as a Christian, I was ignorantly watching some of the lesser sins for entertainment that I should have been shutting my eyes to, but did not know they were sinful.
This means that I am in no way presenting the view that if anyone is watching sins for entertainment ignorantly, that they are not a very godly Christian. The truth is, I personally believe many Christians much godlier than myself may be ignorantly watching many things with sin in them that they should never watch. For the truth is, the Bible does not tell us how far a godly man or a godly woman can go in sin and still show themselves to be a Christian. But all those in Zion watching sin for entertainment should be alarmed by the fact that God in our text in Isaiah 33, 14 through 15 shows us that the only ones who will finally escape eternal burnings are those who shut their eyes from seeing evil. This seems to be the view that William Guthrie in his book, The Christian's Great Interest, had when he says, I grant men may be ignorant of many commands and many sins, and may imagine, in some cases, that some sins are not hateful to God, but supposing that they are instructed in these things, there can be no agreement between righteousness and unrighteousness. In light of the previous comments by Guthrie, as I begin to be instructed on movies, that they were preaching unrighteousness or sin, I had to stop watching them. Or Hebrews 10, 26-32, concerning continuing willfully in sin, or any sin, would have been true of my state, and continuing in sins of watching sin for entertainment. Second, from this text in Isaiah 33, 15, we could talk about many things that we see with our eyes. However, in these lectures, we are going to be limiting our talks to how we use our eyes to watch stage plays or movies, which is nothing but a stage play. Thus, when you hear the word stage plays in these lectures, please think about those things synonymous with stage plays, such as dramas, movies, cinema, and television shows, which are all rehearsed by performers on a stage and later watched for the entertainment on television or at the movies. For drama is used as an art and necessary means the media culture uses to influence and direct people away from God, purposeful living, eternity, and heavenly mindedness. Drama itself comes in various formats such as television, Broadway plays, musicals, movie theaters, stage plays, rehearsed television shows with actors, and rock concerts. Since the Bible does not specifically mention these previous amusements and entertainments by name, people have wrongly assumed the Bible has nothing to say about them. However, when you hear the word stage plays, or its many synonyms, do not think that I am condemning documentaries without stage actors or any number of subjects such as church history, American history, cooking shows, gardening shows, learning to operate machines, how to build houses, and other types of shows which are all lawful so long as you do not have to watch sin being acted out. Third, also realize that Satan has sought to deceive the church to thinking that what you watch with your eyes and hear with your ears on stage is not real actors speaking with the mouth, touching with the hands, hearing with the ears, but rather pretend speaking, pretend touching, and pretend hearing, and thus not really sinful entertainment, but indifferent recreation. To understand how stage plays are not indifferent, but sinful, 
We must understand the Lord Jesus and how he used the word hypocrite in the New Testament with the Pharisees. Interestingly enough, the Greek word for hypocrite in the New Testament means stage actor. Thus, when Christ says the Pharisees are hypocrites, he is saying that they are acting like stage actors who perform actions outwardly, but these outward actions have no inward sincerity of the heart. In failing to think like Christ, most Americans have bought into the belief that what men and women do on stage is not sinful, because those who act out sins do not feel and or believe what they are doing. However, to show the falseness of this view, we would not think if two people behave immorally on stage for us to watch, that just because they are pretending to be married and in love with each other, that this is not sinful conduct. So, if two people to pretend to gossip or slander or willfully imitate any other sin, we cannot say it is not sin either. For if the one man and woman act out immorally on stage in front of yourself or later on your television or at the movies or on the internet, then the other action of gossip and slander is sinful also. With regard to stage plays, in movies, Satan has also caused us to adopt the culture's mentality of rating things with a PG-13 or R rating, which is worse by involving such things as sexual immorality, violence, and much profanity and blaspheming of Jesus Christ's name. However, while deceiving us to thinking, we can let our children and selves and families and churches watch PG movies and watch lesser sins acted out, such as gossip, slander, anger, immodest dress, and many other sins. In practice, in our movie watching, we are behaving as the Pharisee and the publican. For the Pharisee, rather than judging his behavior by Christ, and perfect holiness, and being convicted of his sin, judged his behavior by the publican, and thought himself righteous. Is this not what the majority of professing Christians in America are doing by excusing their sin and watching lesser sins, which Jesus died for, and which God's wrath was poured out on his son at the cross? while at the same time being self-righteous and not watching the greatest sins and using the rating of the movie system rather than the rating of Christ's perfect holiness, which hates all sin and loves all righteousness, whose eyes are too pure to look on wickedness and can do no wrong, Habakkuk 1.13. Fourth, there are three main ways in which we sin in watching actors in movies. 1. How do we sin by delighting in the actor's sin? In Romans 1, 28-32, we have a description of the sins that most dramas and movies contain, along with God's mind and what he thinks of our watching these sins in movies. To understand the Lord's mind regarding movies, drama, stage plays, we will ask the Lord three questions from Romans 1, 28 through 32. 1. What does the Lord say about how do stage players act out on television, movies, in stage plays, etc. The answer. 
The Lord says in Romans 1, 29 through 31. They are filled with all manner of, or acts of, unrighteousness, evil, covetousness, malice. They are full of envy, murder, strife, deceit. They are gossips, slanderers, haters of God, insolent, haughty, boastful, inventors of evil, disobedient to parents, foolish, faithless, heartless, ruthless. Is this not many of the sins that we see actors acting out filled with all manner of unrighteousness for our very eyes? Two, what does God say they deserve who act out such sins or any sin unrepentantly before the Lord? Answer, the Lord shows us in Romans 1.32, Though they know God's decrees, that those who practice such things deserve to die, they not only do them, but give approval to those who practice them. Here we see God saying, I watch you in the movies. Maybe you're not delighting in these sins. But are you giving them your approval? If you are not practicing these sins, are you helping support them in these movies? Three. How are these sins approved before a watching audience? Either on stage, at home, at the movie theater, on the internet. Answer. The Lord shows us that you're watching them act sinful in these ways come by. One, your hand clapping. Two, your money paid to the performers in seeing the movie. Three, you're laughing at sin. Four, you're finding happiness in their performing unrighteousness before your eyes. Five, you're using them in vanity. Six, you're admiring their performances. Seven, you're not speaking out against these sins as evil. From the previous responses from the Lord, in Romans 1, 28 through 32, it should be clear that you are not to watch movies with sinful behaviors in them. While the answer may not be the one that you hope for, you are now accountable to God to never watch any movie with any sin in it. It should be obvious that we must be very careful what we set before our eyes and listen to with our ears because it will influence how we think with our minds. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue, and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Think on things above rather than things on the earth. Those words come from the Apostle Paul. It would seem that to enter any stage play willfully, to watch any movie in our home willfully, or to go to any movie theater willfully, or to go to any spectations where we can see men and women acting out sin willfully cannot be without sin. Thus, in comparing Romans 1, 28 through 32 with Philippians 4, 8, we see the contrast of wickedness and righteousness. We see the wickedness which stage plays or movies consist of and the righteousness which thinking on things above consists of. It is impossible to go to a movie and obey the command to think on that which is true, noble, 
just, pure, lovely, of good report, virtuous, praiseworthy, and heavenly minded. Rather, even the most godly will be tempted with sounds or images of unrighteousness, evil, covetousness, malice, envy, gossip, slander, haters of God, insolent, haughty, boastful, inventors of evil, disobedient to parents, foolish, faithless, heartless, and ruthless. Do we not see in this characteristic of ungodliness or unrighteousness in Romans 1, 28-32, so much of what consists in our movies and our TV shows today in America 2015? I ask to look into your soul and ask, is it worth it to risk your soul, as it says in Romans 32, by not just doing these things in your heart, in your life, unrepentantly, but how about when you delight in those others who do these things? Read over these sins and ask if your movies or if your shows or whatever you watch have these things in them. And if they do, let the words, they are worthy of death, who delight in these, ring in your ears. Every time you open the Bible, you go to worship, you pray, you meditate on God, or anything else you do, that it might turn your eyes from evil, by God's grace. Thus, do we not see that the list of sins contained in Romans 1, 28-32, are the very sins which television and movies consist of. Do we not see that the sins of Romans 1, 28-32 oppose the very virtues we are commanded to meditate upon? Philippians 4, 8. Certainly, the church of the past would be appalled that the sins they preached against you listen to and watch for entertainment. Second, not only do we approve of their watching sin by watching actors, but we also fail to expose their sin by fellowshipping with them in their sin. In fact, Paul elsewhere says that it is not just delighting in sin, as Romans 1.32 teaches, that is sin, but to watch others sin is to partake with sinners in their deeds, or to fellowship with them and not exposing their sin to them. Ephesians 5.11 says, And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. What is Paul saying, but that if you want to watch movies with unrighteousness in them, you partake in fellowship with them in these actors' sins rather than obeying God by reproving them. Third, it is not only that we fail to expose their sin by taking pleasure in these sins, but the best that you can hope to come by in watching these actors in the movies is to be corrupted and your godliness to suffer. And time perhaps wasted in the means of grace. For the purpose of the means of grace is to transform us to godliness. But the text in 1 Corinthians 15, 32-34 says that we are corrupted by this. While many may say, 
But that is just if we delight and fail to expose their sin that we risk contamination or damnation. Paul goes one step further in 1 Corinthians 15, 32-34, showing us that all evil communications corrupt good manners. 1 Corinthians 15, 33-34 says, Be not deceived, evil communications corrupt good manners. Awake to righteousness and sin not, for some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. For we are corrupted during the stage play or movie when we are constantly being communicated by the voice of the actor the least as well as the greatest communications of sin by what we see with our eyes or hear with our ears. To understand what this word, evil communications, means, it is how bad company corrupts our good habits, showing us that if, therefore, we have seen in this fourth point three ways we sin by our eyes, by watching actors sin in movies. First, we sin with our eyes by watching and especially delighting in their sin. Second, we sin by not exposing their sins, but rather having fellowship or participating with them in their sins. And third, we have seen that we sin when we are around them because it ends up corrupting the godliness that we are seeking to have when we use the means of grace. Thus, we know that we are not allowed to watch even the least sin acted out for pretend because we read in Hebrews 10, 26-32, that if we willfully continue in any known sin, there is no longer a sacrifice for sin, but only an expectation of fire and judgment. In other words, if I continue willfully in any known sin, whether a great sin like watching people on stage act immorally, or in a lesser sin like watching actors gossip or slander, I sin willfully. Thus, when you hear the word movies, stage plays, drama, television shows, or cinema, do not only think of watching performers act out the greatest sins, but especially the least sins for your entertainment. For truly, this is the nature of a stage play in any era of church history or history in general, to act out sin is what stage actors do. Thus, to conclude this introduction, you might be thinking now that these three messages will be sharp and I pray convicting. But please know that I am not trying to be your eternal judge, but to present God's mind in Scripture as I, like yourself, need messages like this one to show me my own sin. For each Christian is in a different place spiritually, and some may be further along in looking at inward sins and hating them than others, while other Christians may be further along in looking at outward sins and hating them than others. However, the true Christian will desire to hate all sin wherever it is seen, both inwardly and outwardly, as God grows them from grace to greater grace. We know this because the Lord in Scripture recognizes a righteous lot who is tormented by what he hears and sees daily, by those things he cannot avoid, and a righteous David who avoids all things and not beholding vanity, as our psalmist says, 
and setting his eyes on no wicked thing, in those things that he can avoid, in Psalm 101.